Hello, personalities, and welcome back. We are going to have another session today about the power of your personality. Today, we are looking at communicating with the personalities. So, I'm gonna be communicating with you and helping you to figure out how to communicate with other people. So, I hope it will be very helpful for you. So, as you sign in today, go ahead and tell us your personality. <laughs> So, if, if I were signing in, my name is Kathy, and I would say, Kathy Colerick. <laughs> so, please sign in. Good morning. I saw Mary, and I see Frida is there, and Linda, and lots of you are signing in. Hey, dear Susan. Uh, I see Susan's name uh, there, and it always reminds me of the great job she's doing with membership for our Women of Worth Bible Study and uh, she's planning another wonderful car parade for us coming up on September 11th. If you are uh, a member of our Women's Bible Study or of Christ Church and you know someone who could benefit from a car parade, they are shut in for whatever reason and could benefit from us driving by sometime in the next few months and giving them a cheery hello, please let me know. Um, I know that many of you are watching live right now with Women of Worth Bible Study. Others are watching through Christ United Methodist Church, and others are on my YouTube channel or my personal Facebook page. And I'm, for whatever reason and, and however, whatever format you're using, I am so glad you've chosen to check out the personalities. I think it's a really useful piece of information for us to have for our our arsenal when we are communicating with other people, when we're living with other people, so that we know their personality type and we know how to approach them or we know when uh, something is going wrong and you could kind of see the signs coming. And you know, you can identify when people are really living in their strengths. So I think it's just a wonderful piece of information for us. Wow, we're all getting signed in here and it's awesome. So glad that you've you've tuned in. So let's review quickly what we learned in the last session. I introduced the four personality types and talked about the strengths and the weaknesses of each one. I helped you to identify each of the personalities. Um, I know that many of you who are, are watching have your handout there. So if you have your handout with you, let me get, no, sorry, mine's not here. Uh, if you have it with you, remember to take a look at the top, the bottom, and the sides of the chart that I gave you. Uh, we learned that the two, two personality top types in the chart at the top are extroverts, and that would be a sanguine and a choleric. And then we learned that the two in the bottom of the chart are melancholy and phlegmatic, and those are the introverts. We learned that introverts process information uh, slowly and more methodically than an extrovert. An extrovert processes information very quickly, can make snap decisions, and the downside of that is they may choose wrong if they are making a decision too quickly. An introvert may take too long to come to a decision, but there's not a right way or a wrong way. Uh, you can be either one, extrovert or introvert, and live in your strengths. And then we know that on the sides of the chart that I gave you, there is the task side on the right side, and that would be the choleric and the melancholy. And those personalities get their energy by doing things, by task, they're task-oriented people. Those on the left side of the chart are sanguine and phlegmatic, and they get their energy around people. And so we, can, we know from that information two important things about each of the personalities. My personality is a choleric sanguine. So I am an extrovert, very clearly, but I am task-oriented and people-oriented. And so it just depends on the occasion. Uh, so I've had some ask that question, how can I be an extrovert and an introvert, for example? Well, it's, it depends on the occasion, the situation. 
when you get your energy from people and when people drain you. And so I think probably during this period where we've been isolated so much, you're learning a lot about your personality. You're learning whether or not you are your energy is being drained because you can't be around people or you, your energy is increasing because you are not around people. And so that's an indicator about personality types. Well, it's important to remember that each of us has a little bit of the four types of personality within us. We are, I call it a smattering or a rainbow. We are a mixture of the four types. So we don't want to put ourselves completely in one box of the personalities. We want to make sure that we know that some of our personality is reflected by the other types. And so it, it, um, it, it's not just one solid type. Now, there are exceptions to that. I know that many that I have tested for this have come up very extremely strong in one type and others are, are uh, they have a, a primary and a secondary, but they do show indications in the other two personality types. Uh, so we come in a variety of formats, but we do want to know what is our primary tendency. That's what is important for us to know. Um, the, it's this, uh, if you have a different, um, result that you're puzzled by, I'd like for you to touch base with me. For example, if you did the assessment or you heard what I talked about last week and you have identified yourself, for example, as a sanguine and a choleric, you would note that those are on opposite sides of the, the squares. And so it's hard for us to be opposites. Uh, for example, I am a choleric and a sanguine. I have very little phlegmatic in me because they are very opposite in personality. For example, the choleric is the highest energy level of the four personalities and the phlegmatic is the lowest energy level of the personality. So it would be very hard for me to be both of those. Uh, remember that the choleric is the doer and the phlegmatic is the watcher. And so it would be hard for me to do both of those. I might have uh, one or two traits of the phlegmatic, uh, but not, not very, very many. It's the same for sanguine and melancholy. It's hard to be both of those. So if your results came out that way, please let me know so that I can talk you through the assessment and the results and we can uh, get a, a quicker um, analysis of that. And, and I'd love to be able to help you with that. Uh, okay, I gave a slogan and a nickname for each of the personalities. So let's review that. The Sanguine is known as the Talker and their slogan is, let's do it the fun way. The Choleric is the doer and their slogan is let's do it my way and the melancholy is the thinker and their slogan is let's do it the right way and then finally the phlegmatic uh, slogan is the watcher and um, their uh, nickname is the watcher and their slogan is let's do it the easy way uh, so those are the four types and uh, we're going to see that personality affects every aspect of our lives, including how we communicate with uh, everybody. And so I'm going to give you some tips today, some strategies to help you to communicate with others and uh, wh whatever their personality type. So let's begin. If you are a sanguine, here are some tips for you in communicating uh, with other people. Number one is to limit conversation. And by that, I mean, allow others the opportunity to talk. It, you're going to become a real bore if you talk constantly because the sanguine wants to fill in the dead air. And so if that's the case, that is, that's your indication that, oh my goodness, I am over talking or oversharing. So limit the conversation. Learn to speak when you have something 
to say that people need to know or that is vital to the situation. Now, having said that, there are going to be times where you just have informal conversations and it just starts to flow. And, and so you are just laughing and telling stories and telling jokes and, and that's, it's, it's wonderful and, and, and fun and people probably are, are saying, oh, tell me more, tell me more, I love to hear you talk. And so you have to balance that with being in a group where you're the only one telling anything and saying anything and the others haven't had an opportunity to jump in and share. So know when to limit the conversation. Be careful about overwhelming others with words. Um, I know as a, as a sanguine, as my secondary, I can do that because I, words are important to me. I, um, I was an English teacher. I, um, my love language is words of affirmation. Uh, I am a talker, and so I know I need to be careful when, about overwhelming people. Sometimes I tell to myself, I'm really tired of hearing myself. I know others must be as well. So we need to know those things about ourselves. Limit the conversation. The second piece of advice to the sanguine is to learn to listen. Practice active listening. And, and that means you, you're paying attention to what uh, others are saying instead of just thinking about what you want to say next. Uh, that's often what a sanguine does. They are thinking about how to jump in to the conversation and say something that's funny, interesting, uh, informative, or whatever, instead of listening while others are speaking. You know, James chapter 1, verse 19 says, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So that could be a a verse that the sanguine wants to, to write down and take to heart. The next piece of advice is to sanguine stay on track. See, one of the trademarks of the sanguine is that they can jump from one topic to another. Uh, this is because they are extroverted, they're people oriented, their brains are working very quickly to come up with things to say and so they can jump from one thing to another and people don't always follow the train of thought. This can be very frustrating to the other personality types. So those are the, the four things that I would suggest to the sanguine to consider uh, when you are in conversation with others. Now, here are some other pieces of advice. If you are another personality type, in this case, if you are phlegmatic or choleric or melancholy and you are communicating with a sanguine, here is some uh, advice. So cholerics, you want to make an effort to be very interested in their colorful stories. Remember, the choler is the bottom line person. Just get to the punchline. Get to the end of the story. Tell me the results of a project. I don't need to know all the others. So it will mean you take an extra little bit of effort to be interested in what the sanguine is saying. And so in order to do that, you might need to stop what you're doing, look the person in the eye, pay attention, and actively listen and then respond. And be careful not to crush that lively, animated spirit of the sanguine. That's what uh, often happens is somebody gets tired of that personality type and then they crush the spirit. Can you see how that happens with children or teenagers by a parent who is just tired of hearing them go on and on and then the spirit gets crushed. So choleric, be careful about that. Melancholies, when you are communicating with a sanguine, look for ways to compliment her. Look for those. It's hard sometimes for the melancholy to do that, especially if it's a very animated sanguine who, that uh, the, uh, the melancholy is just kind of done with, with being around. Laugh at her stories, though, when it is appropriate. And so let her know she is appreciated for her humor. And phlegmatics. Um, you might feel silly, but try to get really excited about 
her ideas or his ideas and his stories because the phlegmatic it is the one that is is not very emotional or animated uh, they're not going to be the one in the group that's going to be clapping loudly and enthusiastically and there's not going to be a big belly laugh uh, come come out very often so you, you even though you feel silly be excited and enthused a little bit about the stories that the sanguine is telling um, and m make sure that you, you acknowledge and sometimes share the stories and give her the credit for them. So those are tips for it, for sanguines and for, for the rest of the personalities communicating with the sanguine. Now let's go to the next personality type and that is a choleric. If you are a choleric, be interested in others. See, they are often so focused on production, getting the job done, that people sometimes get in the way. And so it's important to be interested in others. Sometimes the brisk manner of the choleric makes others afraid to even approach them. And so we want to be mindful of that, to, to stop paying attention to the task at appropriate times so that you can engage with people. Listen to uh, others complete their sentences because see, cholerics, and I'm one, so I'm speaking from experience, want to complete the sentence for others. It is something I really struggle with. Uh, it, is, it is so offensive to try to complete somebody else's sentence. Um, it, Unless it's a, a, a funny going back and forth where you're kind of both sharing the same story. But if you're in a meeting and a, a, a gathering of some sort and others are trying to present their ideas, the choleric often wants to move the meeting along, move the programming along, move the time together along, and finish the sentence for those. Whereas other personalities take a longer time to process information, and so it's, they, they're gonna to have to take a beat in order to get the word. Now, sometimes they may want some help with that, and they may say, thank you. Others, there times they're going to say, don't offend me by putting words in my mouth. So we just need to be mindful of that. Uh, and then another piece of advice is to cultivate small talk. See, cholerics don't typically take the time to invest in, in people, in, in others, the way that maybe the other personalities do. And cholerics typically find small talk a waste of time. And so cholerics need to broaden your horizons and areas of interest and find ways to engage in activities that might appeal to others when you are in conversation. Here's what I have observed about cholerics, especially in their weaknesses, that they are so busy focusing on the task or themselves that they think that they can engage others in conversation by talking about what the choleric is interested in instead of leaning into the other person and, and finding out what the other person is interested in and asking about that and asking them to share that. That could be a real weakness of the choleric. And then here's another piece of advice. Ask rather than demand. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it is so easy for the choleric to say, go do this, get me that, come now, instead of asking uh, for someone to do that. Will you please get me a cup of coffee? Uh, I don't even drink coffee and I would never say that, but it's just an example. Uh, remember, please and thank you are so important. Sometimes the choleric is so busy with the task and focused on something that the niceties get ignored. And so we need to be careful of that and be careful with our tone of voice because cholerics believe that time, effort, and energy that it takes to relate to people don't help them get to the bottom line. And so that's a warning sign for the choleric. Here's a verse that the choleric might keep in mind. It's found in Proverbs 16, verse 24. Kind words are like a uh, home, enjoyable and healthy. Isn't that a wonderful thing to say? Kind words are like home, enjoyable and healthy. 
Now, if you are another personality type and you are communicating with a choleric, then here are some tips. So if you are a sanguine communicating with a choleric, then remember to stick to the bottom line because that's where they're going. Uh, that's what they want to hear. And so much of this is important in business situations, in negotiations or in uh, situations where you have a finite amount of time. Um, and so remember that the choleric is listening for the bottom line. Picture uh, the choleric as a conductor in the orchestra. And so if you're in a, a group setting and the choleric is leading it and is perhaps in a weakness, then you would want to kind of watch for the direction of the choleric to give you an indication. Okay, now share, come on and talk and talk. Uh, the choleric, if you're with a choleric and especially in their weakness, they don't want a spontaneous solo coming from you. Melancholies, uh, remember the choleric's to-do list. Their time is really valuable. Um, you've probably done lots of research on a topic, but you only need to tell the choleric the bottom line essentials of the information. They don't really want to hear how you came to that conclusion unless the research data is important to them. Um, so be mindful of that. If you are a phlegmatic and you're speaking to a choleric, speak more quickly than your usual pace. Um, sometimes the, the phlegmatic is so thoughtful about something that it slows the pace and the dialogue of the conversation. So one thing that you can do is to practice reading a paragraph and time yourself and see how long it takes and then read it again and try to cut about 25% off the reading time and see if see how that sounds. Record it and see how it sounds or ask somebody the question, do I take too long to say something? Do I take too long to, to tell a story? Is there a better way to do this? Um, and so we want you to just be mindful, phlegmatics, that of others, especially in the settings. I want to keep going back to that. I'm not trying to change personalities, but I'm trying to help you be mindful of others when you're in conversation. Uh, here is what James 5 verse 12 says as a note to the phlegmatic who sometimes uh, can't make up the mind and, and wavers back and forth and conversations then get stifled in. I don't know what to do. I can't make up my mind. I can't choose. And so here's what James 5 verse 12 says. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's an indication to be more decisive in conversations. One tip um, I advocate for every personality type is to really think about what you're going to say before you begin engaging in conversations that you want to really be meaningful conversations. So those are the tips for a phlegmatic or if you are in conversation with a phlegmatic. Now, if you are a melancholy, here are the tips for you. Lighten up. Melancholies often have to work to add humor. They may have a dry wit, um, but, but sometimes they get so focused on the task because we're talking about personalities that are both um, introverts and task oriented. And so when you reflect that type of personality, you sometimes get so focused on the job at hand that you don't lighten up. And if you hear people tell you that lighten up over and over and over, it's important to begin to listen to that. Melancholies have a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, some of my dearest friends are melancholy and I find no greater joy than to be around them and to have conversation with them because they do have a wonderful sense of humor and they do know how to lighten up. And so they're living in their strengths. Uh, but some uh, don't use their humor because everything is, is, is tense or strict or highly focused on the task. Remember that they are in their personality type, the people they don't want to be around 
are frivolous people, people who just tend to over talk. We want their humor, the humor of that melancholy to, to shine through the conversations. Here's another tip. Don't be hesitant to, to enter into the conversation. Sometimes melancholy sit back because they are the thinkers and they are natural listeners. Oh, isn't that a wonderful trait? Uh, they're natural listeners and sometimes they have to work to participate in a conversation. And so it's really hard for them to jump in and engage. Uh, they can feel hurt that nobody wants to engage them in a conversation and that no one asks them questions. And I've observed this and I've experienced this from time to time in groups where it might be an informal setting, it might be at a dinner table or, or with a group of people. And those who are the big talkers, the sanguine and the, the choleric are dominating the conversation and the melancholy really has to work to interject. And they may have wonderful ideas, they may have a funny story to tell, but they are waiting for there to be a pause in the conversation to jump in and sometimes it doesn't happen. And so really looking for those opportunities to jump in are really important. This is why we all need to be living in our strengths so that everyone has that equal opportunity to contribute to conversations. <coughs> uh, then the next piece of advice is to think positively work on thinking positively. Uh, sometimes that melancholy is prone to thinking about the negative. If you go back and look at the descriptors in this personality type, you will see that that is one of them that shows up, the negativity. And so work on thinking positively. This means that you might have to deal with a critical spirit, which is one of the characteristics of a melancholy you want to think about and to avoid having a critical spirit. See, the other personalities have their own weaknesses, like the choleric can come down too hard and lash out at people, and the sanguine can just completely overtalk and be silly and frivolous and not engage deeply and think deeply, but the melancholy sometimes has that critical spirit. Here is a verse for the melancholy. It's found in Ephesians 4, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Actually a wonderful verse for all of us, isn't it? But it's really helpful for a melancholy who goes into a weakness and becomes critical of others. So work on offering praise and encouragement instead of criticism and look for ways to build people up. Sometimes a melancholy in a weakness feels that if that they might be endorsing what they feel is substandard behavior and they don't want to signal that a certain behavior is acceptable uh, when really a change should be made. But the truth is that most people are more willing to make that change and to hear your opinions if it is coded with positive reinforcement rather than criticism. And so instead of criticizing someone, it's important for us to present the information with a positive turn, a positive twist, and to always catch people doing something really good and use that opportunity to instill encouragement and praise instead of the, um, and instead of being going right to the critical aspect. So um, if you are uh, another personality type and you are communicating with a melancholy, be sensitive to her schedule and her level of interest because a melancholy is on a schedule. Remember, they're the ones who are really good at calendaring and making a list. And so you want to be mindful of that. Um, use a uh, a teaser like, I have some really good news to share. Let me know when it's a good time to talk about it. 
See, that's a teaser. And that's a, another good tip for, for all of us to use. I have some really good things to talk about, but I just want to make sure when you're ready to listen and we can talk about those. Uh, so here are some other things. If you are a choleric and you are communicating with a melancholy, it's important to allow time uh, to, for them to share their thoughts and their ideas. So resist the tendency to listen just long enough to get the gist of the topic and then be dismissive and to move on because that will shut her down. If we just listen enough to say, oh, I get where you're going and that's all I need to hear. And so be interesting and engaging with the melancholy. Um, sanguines are the ones that, um, I should have addressed that first, sanguines are the ones that you want to be uh, sensitive to her schedule because sanguines might think they just have all day to talk and share stories and laugh and be funny, but a melancholy uh, might be on the schedule and so they may not be interested in the story so sanguines be very mindful of that and if you're a, mel a phlegmatic and you are engaging in conversation with a uh, melancholy she appreciates facts so offer facts that you can back up with support support and be prepared in in advance for what you're going to say both the phlegmatic and the melancholy are uh, extra introverts and so you have that in common but the phlegmatic is more of a people person and a melancholy is more a task person so speak into that part of her personality the fact that she wants to know task inf type information and so be mindful of that when you're talking with him or her now if you are a phlegmatic let's look at tips and strategies for you the first one is to get enthused. You know, um, the phlegmatics that I know um, and living in their strengths, I, I, I love to be with them because they are even killed. They are the ones who are not going to get all out of sorts. They're, uh, they're going to be balanced. And so I love that about them. What, what we want is for them to be enthused and excited and get their energy level up so that you know they really, really like what you're saying or really can answer with some enthusiasm the questions that you're asking them. So phlegmatics, get enthused, get excited about something. You might have to work to to express yourself more easily, especially when someone gives you a gift or makes a kind gesture or asks you a question about whether or not you like something. So le learn to be more effusive <laughs> with your comments, more demonstrative. Uh, if people perceive that you are disinterested, they will eventually disengage. And so work to show some excitement and enthusiasm. And here's a verse for the phlegmatic. Philippians 4, 8 says, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. And that's just that reminder that when things are excellent and they're worthy of praise, figure out how to express that and go beyond just those uh, simple words like, oh, that was good, or, or it was okay, or uh, this, this was pretty nice, or that four-letter word, fine. <laughs> so we want to go beyond that a little bit. Uh, also, learn to express your opinion. When you are asked the question, what would you like to do, or where would you like to go, they usually respond, I don't care, or it doesn't matter to me, or whatever you want to do. And that is one thing we really like about phlegmatics is they, they are so easygoing and they fit into various groups. But one thing we also would like uh, are on occasions it's important to really share what you do want to do. Express your opinion. Stand up and speak. Uh, voice and opinion. Start by expressing opinions about things that are really important to you. And that's a way to, to get your voice heard. And then the next piece of advice is to open up. Open up. 
because the phlegmatic is proud of their stoic tendencies. See, the, of the four personalities, the phlegmatic is more stoic. They keep things close inside. They are uh, introverted, and so things stay inside. They process slowly. They think about things for a long time, and so they're proud that they're stoic. The other personalities are quite different in that regard, especially the sanguine who's playing around laughing and, and engaging and, and um, expressive in their face, and that choleric has no trouble stating how they feel about things. And then the melancholy is more like that, that phlegmatic, uh, just a little bit more stoic, but he, the uh, melancholy has a, a tendency to take things inside and be uh, emotionally tender or a, to cry, but the, the phlegmatic is much more stoic. And so that can come across as indifferent or apathetic. And so you want to be mindful of that. You know, if, if, that's, if you're not indifferent and you're not apathetic, you're just quiet and, and blank. That, was, that is one of the descriptors. If you go back and look at the assessment, you'll see the word blank. And you, you may not have identified with that because that sometimes seems quite offensive to say there's just a blankness there. There's, there's no expression whatsoever. But that's something for phlegmatics to think about. It, it, is there any expression in the face where people have an indication uh, uh, in the conversation of, yeah, yep, he, he is tracking with me, he's, he's on point with me, I see he likes what I say, or I have no earthly idea, and it seems as if he's checked out. And so that's that blankness. And so you want to then find ways where you can open up and share and show uh, what your ideas and your feelings are and project your voice. If you are another personality type and you are communicating with a phlegmatic, now this, let's look at the sanguine first of all. Your natural ability is to be positive and encouraging. And so you want to look for the good with a phlegmatic. Let's remember that the phlegmatic is one who's not known as the uh, sanguine is for being the talker, the storyteller, the funny person, the, the bright light in the room, not known as the choleric is for the great doer, great leadership, being a, a great force in a situation, or for the melancholy, who is that organizer and the detailed person and the person that keeps us on track. See, the phlegmatic is not known for that. They're known for being who they are, this all-purpose, best all-around mediator, one who's not going to ruffle anybody's feathers, and they need to be acknowledged for that and praised for that, for being who they are are just um, on that complete surface of life who they are so that that's important then for sanguines to look for the good and encourage the phlegmatic uh, not for uh, what others think the phlegmatic should be see often other personality types want to tell the phlegmatic who to be let's say that the phlegmatic lives with a choleric as a parent or a spouse and that, that choleric is often telling the, the phlegmatic, why don't you talk? Why don't you get out of your shell? Why don't you express yourself? You know, you, you need to have more, more of a life. And, and so there, people are constantly trying to tell the phlegmatic how to be, but that's not who they are. And so we want to acknowledge who they are and appreciate that. So uh, they're not going to be the funny storyteller or the one up in the front of the room, command, being command central. And so we want to make sure sanguines know that really look for the good and help them to shine. Cholerics, uh, time is an important consideration when you are talking with a phlegmatic. Phlegmatics do not speak in rapid fire communication as the choleric does. You know, I'm speaking to myself. I, I know that I can shout out a whole list of things to be done and I can make it snappy and quick and let's get going. 
and the phlegmatic does not process those things that quickly. And so we want to slow it down and, and remove the rapid fire commands from our relationship with a phlegmatic. Phleg, uh, phlegmatics process their thoughts in a slower way. Now, and I want to repeat this. I've said it numerous times, but it's important to reiterate this. It doesn't mean that is wrong. It doesn't mean they are slow. It means that they are thoughtful and they are processing information at a rate to get them to the decision that is the best decision possible because they've thought it through. Uh, cholerics, on the other hand, can assess it quickly and move on. It might not be the right decision though. So cholerics, in that conversation with the phlegmatic, let them process the information the way they need to process it. Develop patience and good listening skills. Now, melancholies, when you are having conversation with a phlegmatic, rein in that ability to spot the negatives because that's the, the tendency to do that. Look for the positives and offer praise. See, words don't cost us anything so let's give them away. And that would be so important in a conversation with that phlegmatic. We all have emotional needs at the very core of our being. And one of those needs for that phlegmatic is to be heard and to be seen for who they are. We're going to have a whole lesson on that next week. We're going to look at the emotional needs of each of the personalities. But if needs are not met in a, in a healthy way, then we seek our, our needs in other unhealthy ways. So that's really very, very important. Well, once we have identified our personality and that of our friends and our family, it helps us to better communicate with them. And I hope that's what this lesson is, is doing for you. If you have questions about this piece of communication, would you please post that in the comments below and let me know about those and I would be happy to answer those and give some direction. If you've heard things now in this session that has have confused you about your own personality, please let me know. Or if now you're hearing more about the personality, you think you may have done the assessment incorrectly, let me know. I'll be happy to review your assessment and talk with you about that. So, so please uh, let me know. So next week, I look forward to talking to you about emotional needs and um, looking forward to that session. Now go out and do good with the personality God has given you. Y'all have a good day.